first of all, um, thank you all for coming. My name is Paul Freeman, and I'm an attorney at Freeman Howard Local in Hudson. And for those who have not been necessarily coming to all of the planning board meetings, um, what I'd like to do is on behalf of Krista Construction and the Mental Health Association of Columbia and Green County, uh, and we have representatives from both here welcome you. Uh, please help yourselves to uh, beverages and dessert if you've had dinner or uh, pre-dinner uh, if you haven't. And I, I, we're going to try to limit this to an hour, uh, but we'd like to give you as much information as we can during the hour. And so uh, I'll just kind of give you an idea of format-wise what we have planned. Um, Ian Hirschberg uh, and, and Kristen Biotti uh, Dan is a, an engineer, and they've worked on the site plan, and the site plan is up for everybody to view. Dan's just going to give kind of a brief overview of where we are in terms of the site plan process, and uh, if you have any questions, Dan and Kristen are available to answer those. After that, um, Susan Cody is here, and then Jeff Robitz, and Jeff's the executive director of the Mental Health Association. And they're going to fill in some of the details about what's contemplated to occur at uh, Goswell Commons or Greenport Commons. And then uh, we're going to try to, uh, to the extent possible after that, entertain questions, <laughs> concerns, and try and uh, address issues that you all might have. So at this point, we'll start with Dan Hirschberg. Um, Dan can go through the site plan, and uh, from there we'll keep moving forward. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. Uh, if you can't hear me back there, let me know. I can speak louder. Um, this building, the people who were at earlier meetings know that this building used to face the other direction. We turned it 180 degrees so that the parking is here, and this is essentially the rear of the building. We uh, relocated the driveway to Green Acre Road uh, at that point there. Uh, we also, after the last meeting, uh, we were able to move the building back another 25 feet so that we could mix in a berm with, with, hope, with retaining some of the existing foliage. Actually, it's a choice because to build the berm, we do have to put fill in, and if you want to save the existing foliage, you sort of have to mix and match it. So, the berm we show there is about 40 feet wide, and that's because we want it flat enough to go up, a level area in the middle, and flat enough to go down. And that, that's detailed here, and these are the trees that we propose to plant. Fairly intensive planting. We also have this designed as a secondary ingress and egress, strictly for emergency purposes. At the request of the board members, we move the uh, emergency gates out to here, here, and here. We now have three emergency gates, all with uh, knock boxes on them so that they may be entered only by uh, the fire or uh, EMTs on an emergency basis. The, um, we also uh, took a portion of our patio here, and we we're going to build that with out of eight inch uh, concrete with uh, uh, 15 inches worth of stone dust or stone uh, underneath it. So this can be accessed with a uh, lot, with the tower truck could come all the way in next to the building as required. Uh, we did check the radiuses, although I didn't get the latest uh, uh, template from them, but we do, we do have templates for both a tower truck and a pumper truck, which are reasonably consistent between the various departments. This will be designed to hold 90,000 pounds, which I understand is the heaviest weight vehicle you have. Uh, we also have shown a stormwater management system which discharges down to the ditch line along uh, Green Acre and that's a shallow, it's a ditch that has some capacity to take the stormwater and we are going to be discharging less water than comes off the site at all storms from a one year storm to a hundred year storm. Uh, we did uh, uh, modify the plan somewhat to show existing vegetation to stay here and here around the driveway so this driveway would be screened by whatever existing vegetation is there. Uh, and the lighting we show here so that the lighting would be screened by the building itself from the rear of the Joslin uh, Boulevard homes. Um, we show a significant landscape plan. We show uh, 
parking, we show a dumpster down at the furthest location, further away from the homes, um, a dumpster at this location here, and a, a service court at this location here. We think essentially the site plan has been amended as we heard comments from the board. Uh, we think it's come a long way and hopefully that uh, a lot of the issues raised by the board members have been addressed. Uh, we, audit, we also added three hydrants we show on the site. We also show a, a point of connection for a, uh, a side connection for a uh, emergency connection to our sprinkler system, as well as a, uh, a strobe light to identify where that is so that if a, a fire company comes on site, they'll be able to see where the connection point is. Um, this is the building elevation, and um, Kristen can answer any question you might have about it. <coughs> building elevation has been changed somewhat too during the time to make it more interesting to have different roof lines intersecting in here. We think essentially it's a nice looking building, um, and uh, quite honestly, I think uh, that pretty much does it with regard to the site plan issues. If you want to break it up, you can take site plan questions now, or you can go straight to Susan's uh, presentation. Uh, I'm aware uh, that, I'm Jeff Roberts, I'm the executive director of the National Association. I'm aware that obviously people back here are unable to see that too well, so um, when we're done with our presentations, if people want to kind of take a better look at it and, and ask Dan some questions, of course, feel free. But I just wanted to give you a, a brief synopsis of uh, what the Mental Health Association is. We've been around since 1958. We were uh, formed by a group of concerned citizens who uh, did some community education, visited some patients who lived in Columbia County that were needing to be in the psychiatric center uh, in Poughkeepsie. Um, and we helped start the first uh, mental health center, actually, which is now operated by the county. In 1981, we started a program. There was uh, something called deinstitutionalization. Uh, it used to be that about 95,000 people with mental health issues were living in state psychiatric hospitals. But with the advent of uh, certain therapies and certain medications, we were able to move people from the hospitals into the community. So today, instead of having 95,000 people in state psychiatric hospitals in New York State, we have 4,000. Everybody else is living in the community. And as we've known from experience, with enough with supports and with um, uh, the therapies and with work and education, et cetera, uh, people are able to success in the community. And we certainly have a lot of people that we work with that are all living in the community very successful. We have, uh, very briefly, we have three divisions. We have a residential division. Susie Cody is the division director for residential. She'll talk to you more about that division and about the project and the folks that, we're gonna be, uh, that will be living there. But we also have a clinical rehabilitation division as well, where we, have, we help people uh, find jobs. Uh, we help people who are located at the community college. We help people uh, be successful in their, in their moving through the community college, uh, getting degrees. We have a couple of day programs where we're helping people learn how to manage their symptoms uh, and learning more about their illness so that they can manage, manage themselves. We have a, a, a relatively large children and families division where we, uh, we, have, um, we, we give support to families that have kids that are emotionally disturbed by providing some respite services to them. We have an AmeriCorps grant. Uh, we uh, oversee the Child Action Advocacy Center, which works with families that have children that have been physically and sexually abused. Uh, and we provide some case management to schools. We have three advanced after school programs where kids in Hudson and uh, in Castle on the side of the river are able to uh, provide some main, uh, sorry, uh, pro provide with activities for after school. So we have a mix of folks. We work with some people that have diagnosed mental illness. We work with other people and families that simply need some additional support in order to be successful in the community. So I'm happy to answer more questions as time goes on in this meeting. But for now, I will throw it over to you. So we've been having, we've had a residential division serving people in residential settings since 1978. And I started working for the agency in 1980. So I've been around for a long time and I've seen it grow. And right now we rent about 120 apartments throughout the community where people live in their apartments and we assist them in finding work, maybe going to school, to the college, um, finding what it is that they want to happen with their life. And they're all people from, from the community. Um, 
the idea of this project is that it's been getting very, very difficult to find nice places to live that people can afford to live in. And we, we find that we rent a lot of apartments and landlords are often not willing to make repairs. And so we're repairing and fixing up and putting new carpeting and you know, replacing bathrooms in someone else's apartment so that the people that we serve can have a nice place to live. So this is why we started talking about doing something like this. Because nowadays, they're not just making um, apartment settings for just people with a mental health issue. It's, um, I don't know, has anybody seen the new building over at Columbia Street? That's one of our buildings. And um, so in that program, it's just people with mental health issues. But from here on, what, what they're doing is affordable housing and mixed housing. So everybody lives together in an apartment complex where services are provided to everyone. So the other people that will be living here are not your typical people who are receiving public assistance. They won't be, afford, they won't be able to afford to live here. It'll be people in our community who are working at Walmart, um, working at the local stores, who really are having difficulty finding a nice place to live that they can afford. You know, maybe single mothers or even families that have children that really have difficulty finding somewhere nice to live. Um, you say they can afford it, how much is, is there, how much assistance are they getting to live here? Well, the rent will be at a certain level, but they're not the same as Section 8. So there, it's like 60% of the they're area. Assist, they're getting assistance to live there, so they still can't afford it. They're not getting assistance to live there. They're paying the rent that we're charging. Yeah, you're, so if you know that the fair market rent. Yeah. They're not paying fair market rent. Right. Check across the street from, from Johnson. That's what fair market rent is. You're not, you're, you're not uh, yes, required to be charging fair market rent. We will be charging fair market rent, and that's I why I say it. that. What is the fair market rent? You want to put a dollar amount on that? Yeah. Well, I believe, I believe um, in Columbia County for a one bedroom apartment, I believe this year the numbers just came out, so I think that it's 727. And what does that include? For one bedroom. Utilities as well? That's utilities included. Uh, no, you they're, not, they're, not, they're not one bedroom apartments. <laughs> Well, yeah, they are. They're a mix not of all of them. They're a mix of one bedroom, two not bedroom, no. for this family is, This is the fair market value of what they're charging across the street in this area. That's fair market for this area. Well, there's a designated fair market amount, amount that is federally designated. Well, we're talking about, about this area. Place. That's why we're having this meeting. This area. What is fair market for this area? Right here. This geographical location. She just said it's 727 yeah, for a one bedroom. That was for Columbia County, not this area. It doesn't matter. This that's what the designated. Is that include Hudson and all the low income places down there too? Is that, is that average? No, those ranks are lower. So that is average, which is bringing that average down. What's the, he's saying? What's the what's the, the value of this area? Okay, when I say fair market rent, it is a federally designated number. It is not broken down by what people are really paying because I can tell you renting 100. Over 100 apartments, we are not paying fair market rent for hardly any of them. We are paying much more than what the designated fair market rent is. We are not paying that for those apartments. Then how much of it is going to be Section 8? Then hmm? how much of it is going to be Section 8? How many people is going to be on that? I can't really answer that. It's not going to be Section 8. That building is not a Section 8 building. It's not like the other Section 8 properties that you have in Hudson. It's more like the crosswinds. Then how are you going to get your money to operate? Well, we have an operating budget, and I'm not the person that does the operating budget. We have a, a tax credit consultant that does all that. <coughs> so what I'm saying is that those projects that you're talking about, like the ones in Hudson, those are Section 8 projects. So every single built, uh, apartment in that project is a Section 8 rent amount. That's not what this is going to be. And Crosswinds, I don't know if you're familiar with Crosswinds, which is down the roadway by the Fireman's Home. That's not a Section 8 project either. That's an affordable housing project. It's different. It's a different kind of idea. A person who receives public assistance will not be able to afford to live here. They won't be able to afford to pay the rent. Yeah, could you tell me what model this uh, appliance is based on? 
All right, because you have a special needs population and you have a general population. Could you tell us some of the models? I understand you submitted those to the planning board. Right. Could you tell us the models and where they're located that this is based on? So Mike can give you some names, possibly, of you gave a list to the planning board, right, of uh, different places that you've worked on. But they're all over the place. I visited one in Long Island. Okay. I, I, it's really important that you give us a model, not ask the builder. Something that you, you know, that you have in your possession, the actual models that this would be based on. Because these are unusual populations to plan together, especially since they're going to be isolated and deal with most services. Well, that's not accurate. They're going to have a lot of services. It's not that there's no bus line, there's no side sidewalks, and you tell us it's a general population. Because we are going to be providing transportation. To and the general population? Yes. To the average person who can afford the rent, they're going to yes. bus them everywhere, we are, take your kids to school, well, and take them to the doctor. Well, the buses would take them to there school. Are no there are no buses. The buses don't go to school? school. There is there's a, no bus line. And there is no the school. The kids have to get picked up at the quarter, so there's no general bus line. But that's going away from my question. I really do want to know the names of the models. Well, there's a, what it, it's called is mixed affordable housing. It that's be a model. real one in real life, but I can go online and look at it. Oh, we got uh, doesn't the, there's, there's doesn't the tons of examples of this kind of of this kind of mixed income. I think the problem that you see with a lot of um, low income housing is that it's concentrated. So I think the idea is the problem I see is you can't find me with the name of one specific place can you give that I could go online yes, and look at. Yes, yes, we can. can. I mean, out in the Rochester area, there's probably a half a dozen. Um, apartment complex is very similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, in New York City, there's probably 50. And they can't tell me the name of one, so that's a problem. For okay, people. control mental health, uh, community access. I mean, I can, I can spit them all out. We, I, how about you give me your name and address, and I will either email or mail you the exact list that we gave the planning with, so you'll have to have. And if you want me to supplement that, I'd be glad to do okay, it. Yeah, with the Krista Builders? The but they're not just builders, they're also housing I understand, developers. I checked them out. Mm -hmm. yes. Concern for Independent Living is the, is the agency that operates one of the um, buildings that I visited down at Long Island. And it was in a beautiful neighborhood, and the complex was absolutely gorgeous. It was beautiful. What kind of services were available to the people? And then walk out. Bottom line is that the organization can walk out to services. And actually, in this particular one that I visited, it didn't look like there was much stores right in the vicinity or services. I don't know Long Island that well, so but it, it looked kind of rural to me in the area that I went to see one or that one of Ralph's places. We will we will give you a list, and so you could uh, at your leisure purview them and uh, see which ones you think may uh, fit as close to this model as what we're doing. Um, but there's many of them. This is uh, this is not an unusual project anymore. There was a, what was the law, Mike? Uh, of Olmstead, right? There was the Olmstead law, which is a federal law that basically says that um, people need to live in the most integrated uh, community setting as possible. And so the New York City Office of Mental Health along with other uh, state agencies, when they want to do housing now for folks, are insisting uh, that it be affordable and mixed housing. So we, we, I mean, we don't have one off the top of my, our head, so forgive us, but we do have a list that we'd be more than happy to share with you. And anybody else? I think what's really important to point out is that the whole concept of this is nothing different than what we're already doing. The only difference is that we don't own a building where people will be living. We own several smaller buildings, but the services that are provided, the transportation services, the transportation for grocery shopping, the taking people and their children to appointments, we do all of that now. We have people who are renting apartments in buildings with other apartments in them. But that's only for a quarter to a third of the population. The rest of the people are going to be stranded. No, it's about half of the population. So half the people won't have basic needs met. Are you saying half the people won't have basic No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is what I would like to build in this project is a way to give other people that are living there transportation. Yeah, I also think it. that you know, we're going to have to see uh, if people that are moving in have their own transportation. I wouldn't assume that it will be. They so might have a car. Like people having, having vehicles. Like Susie said, this is not for the panic population. This is for folks that potentially or most likely are working in minimum wage jobs. And so they may have a, 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 an automobile that they could transport themselves to work with that. I mean, they're probably doing that right now. Right. So, What's that? Do you live in this area? Do you see the people walking in the snow to try to go to 
word is that I suffer. I mean, I think there's a lack of preparation for the population. I, frankly, am also concerned about the site and how you pick the site and the fact that it's on protected land. But in fact, I would never place anyone I cared about there. It's not going to be a good mix. And those people who are going to drive to their jobs, that's not the reality for people in this community. Because I can tell you who walks to the price chopper now in this community. Okay. Right, who walks to the Walmart and carries the four bags back, right. steals the car so they can manage. There is no sidewalk. There is no transportation. Well, that's why we're hoping to be able to help people with transportation. So okay. if they're living here, they'll be able to have some help from us. And that's one of the reasons, you know, when I started thinking about this, I was thinking about my stepdaughter and her two small children who could not find an apartment that they could afford. And she works and works and works as a CNA. And she was not able to find a decent apartment. And what she was living in was awful. And, you know, I would place my stepdaughter and my two grandchildren to live here because I know it's going to be a safe building with 24-hour staff coverage monitoring everybody who moves into this building is going to have a thorough background check. There will be children living there. You know, there's certain regulations you have to follow when you're doing an affordable housing project. We're not just going to rent it to anybody to, just to rent it up. People are going to have to have background checks. And there'll be a staff there at all times to deal with any issues that may come up. So when you're looking at a project like that, it's actually much safer than just expecting people to live in rundown apartments without any assistance. I think there's another question. This complex is this taxable or is it tax exempt? Our agency is tax exempt, but we write what's called a pilot into the project, and that's paying a portion of the taxes. So yes, we will be paying taxes. Part. Part. We will be paying part of the taxes. What about school tax? I assume I don't I don't really know exactly how the taxes work. I'm not sure it'll be broken out like that. Okay. But, but we're gonna have to get back to that. I'm sorry that we don't know the answer, but, but there is money in the project for an annual basis. Well the reason I'm asking is because you're gonna require a lot of services from the fire departments or police department, DPW, yeah. right. who pays for all that yeah. if you're only paying part of the tax. Now that's my concern. That's a question that needs to be answered. Yeah, well, uh, we, we can probably get a, a, some more information uh, once we get a chance to research that. I'm not sure. But, but be aware that we will be paying some money in lieu of taxes. There was a previous meeting similar to this, is that correct? Yes. And the issue of taxes just came up? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. About the taxes. But there was only a handful of people. That well, well, nobody knew about it. Well, just know about that. Start talking about handing out flyers to letting everybody know. And stick to them. No, I didn't hear that. But the point is, the commission is where. Where? Yeah. Nobody got flyers. I didn't even get flyers to this. I live on Green Acres. Nobody. nobody. You're going to use my room. It was my understanding that flyers were mailed to everyone. Not everyone. Not everyone. The slash number was the slash number used a mailing list generated by the computer of people within a half a mile. How many people got letters in the mail? Oh, come on. We, 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 we mailed them, and then they also went around and they put some in the door. On well, no, here's what we did. I was going to put them. The last time we had a meeting, I went around to every door and put them in the mailboxes. And then I was told to do not put things in someone's mailbox. And quite honestly, I didn't want to put myself at risk for having somebody call and having me arrested for putting it in the mailbox. So I was a little leery about doing that. I, so I do believe it was on the town. It was on the town. Monday. May I say something? Yes, of course. Uh, gentlemen, right there, we met at, after the meeting, uh, sir, yeah. the architect. Uh, we met after the meeting, and I. I'm the engineer, not the architect, sir. Uh, and I asked you if you could consider letting us all know on Green Acres, you know, to send us a letter. And you said, absolutely. I said, I don't read the paper. And you promised us that we would all. Get I'll, I'll give you a list of who we sent it to. Do you remember it? that conversation? I remember that conversation. Okay. Yeah. We sent out 58 notices to everybody within a half a mile of the center. My friend 
don't know if we did that one. So I apologize for that. That's my fault. And it's hard to get everybody in one place to set up a meeting. And so by the time... Explain how the mailing went out. The mailing went out to the person listed as the property owner of every property within one half mile of the center of the site. And we, we identified 58 projects. We had the mailing list we sent it to. And only one came back, and that was from Joe's witness. Everything else was either delivered or the first, the first batch mail never got it. 